Component flexibility allows models to have different values based on the context of the assembly into which they are placed. For example, here I have a spring part open and I would want this spring to be able to expand and contract. With this particular spring, it was created in a very intelligent manner. First off, if I turn on my datum point display, one of the first features in the model here are a, a couple of datum points in a spring. If I go to my relations dialog box, they've written some relations that basically drive the length of the spring based on the distance between these two points. So I can make that distance flexible and then when I place the spring in an assembly it'll adjust the size accordingly. To apply flexibility to a model you'll go to file and then prepare and model properties but again this is a command that I use so often I have it in my quick access toolbar and in the model properties dialog box here we have flexible and right now it's not defined. I will click the blue change hyperlink and here we have the different kinds of objects that we can make flexible. In a part you have six different choices. We have dimensions, features, in other words you could have features resumed or suppressed, geometric tolerances, we could also have different materials, surface finishes, and parameters. But let's close out of parameters. I'm going to go back to dimensions and I'm going to select that datum point feature. Here we have the distance between the points. I will click on it and then click OK. And now that length dimension is a flexible dimension defined in this part. That's good. Let me click OK and then close out of here. Now let's hop over to an assembly in which I want to place that spring. I will go to the model tab, click the assemble button, and let's grab that spring. And when I go to assemble it, it says, hey, wait a second, this has predefined flexibility. Do I want to use that when I'm placing the component? I'm going to say yes. And there is my spring down at the screen and it opens up this varied items dialog box and the original length is 18. The default method for defining the new length is by value and right now it's got an asterisk meaning that it's going to use the current value and it just happens that the distance between these points is a value of 18 but rather than using by value, I'm going to click on it and I'll get a drop down list and I can do a measurement in order to determine what this value should be. So I'm going to measure the distance between these other two points, select one point, select the other point. By the way, I didn't have to hold down the control key. And here's the distance 18. In other words, the value is going to be the same. Let's click OK in there and then I will click the OK button and now I can start assembling it. So let's select one point over here, select this other point. Right now it's giving me a distance constraint. I can double click on the 3D note in the graphics area and then change this to coincident. And let's do a new constraint, which I'll get to from the right mouse button. And to pick my references, I'm just going to use the dragger to move the component out of the way. And let's select this point and that point. And right now it's giving me oriented. I actually want them to be coincident, so I'll choose that. And I can close this little thing. And right now it's rotated at the wrong angle. Let me turn on my datum plane. Oh, my datum plane display is on. Let me use my layers to access the layers for this clutch spring. And then I will show them. And I'm going to do a, another constraint. And for this constraint, I'm going to choose parallel. I'm going to pick this surface over here and let's grab that datum plane. That's good. Now it rotates it to the angle that I like. And I will hit the check mark. And the spring is placed in there. Let's turn off the display of our datums. And the beauty of using this method is that if the distance between these components ever changes, then the length of the spring will automatically update. For example, let's select this part here. 
and we're going to edit definition and let's go to this constraint right now it's coincident let's change this to a distance I'm going to change this value to 4 and hit the check mark the other point was mirrored right now I'm getting a regeneration failure let's hit the regenerate button hey the spring updated its length uh, because of that defined flexibility and my regeneration failure went away so that's what I like now I'm going to show you a, another method of doing flexibility but to do that I'm going to delete the spring out of here and let me make sure I have it closed out over here and I'm going to erase not displayed so it's no longer in session and let's open up the spring part all right because I closed without saving if I go to the model properties you'll see again right now flexibility is not defined if I click the change button you'll notice that the dimension is not in here you can also define flexibility on the fly when you are placing a component so let's go back over to this assembly and I'm going to go to the assemble command which has a drop down and here we have a choice for flexible and I'll choose the clutch spring part and right now it opens up the varied items dialog box and I can select what I want to be flexible and so again let me select that datum point feature and select this dimension and then click OK and OK and let's turn on our point display and pick this point over here and that point over there double click on the note to change it to a coincident constraint and let's do a new constraint I'll pick that point and this point over here change that to coincident and let's do a new constraint I'll pick this surface here and the datum plane called top and for the flexibility I forgot to change this uh, value over here so let's change this to distance and again we'll measure the distance from the spring point to the spring point click OK the distance is 26 I will click OK and it regenerates the part and let me change that constraint there to parallel to get the rotation angle correct and now I will click the check mark so that way we've made this clutch spring flexible but only in this assembly if I click the open button and then open up the clutch spring part and again go to my model properties dialog box and go to flexible it's not defined if I click the change button the dimension is not listed in here so again you can define it in the model itself or you could define it on the fly and when you do it on the fly like I just did that flexibility definition is only in this one particular assembly if I go to assemble the spring in some other assembly it's not going to retain this definition of flexibility also you can define flexibility for assemblies for example this particular assembly model let's go to the model properties dialog box if I click on the change hyperlink for flexible here I get the dialog box for flexibility in the assembly and there's one additional tab here components you could select different components which will either be in the assembly or not I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something in this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.